Hello ladies and gentle worms, I'm back with another 0% rated movie and this time it's gonna get sexy. Bo Derek stars as an international adventurous in the film that shocked America, Bolero. We have Bolero, a romance film from 1984 in which the crux of the plot is Mac, a rich girl from the 1920s played by Bo Derek, wants to find an ideal lover to give her virginity to. So having just watched a silent film set in the Sahara Desert, Mac seems hell-bent making love in the dunes after graduating. Let's start by galloping across the burning sands of Morocco in the arms of a real sheep. I too am so easily influenced by films. Just the other day I had a sudden urge to try heroin after watching Trainspy. <laughs> Mac and her best friend, the Spanish Catalina, graduate and Mac decides to strip and run around naked in an act of rebellion while her classmates watch on. However, her family chauffeur, Cotton, is a little bit embarrassed by the ordeal and tries to cover her up. And that leads to this kind of creepy dialogue. You know, I was amazed at how much you changed since the last time I saw you without any clothes. Without any clothes? I think you were three or four. You've grown well. Oh, God, that's uncomfortable. There's a male theme of creepiness that is threaded throughout this film. And it gets much worse later on. Also, did you hear the actual cut in a feature film? Without any clothes. Without any clothes. I think you were... They just cut a dialogue. He didn't interrupt. The editing of this is abhorrent. The acting in this film is atrocious as well. Cotton the chauffeur sounds bored and monotone. That's not my position. And this poor Scottish guy, it sounds like he's really trying hard to remember his lines as he speaks. I mean you no disrespect. Not at all. To the contrary, what I wish when I had graduated, I'd been cheeky enough to do what you did. Bo Derek, our leading actress, is the worst of the lot though. She's just gained a large inheritance from graduating and this is her wonderful reaction. She whisses cotton. Anyway, it's off to the exotic land of Morocco. We've got belly dancers. We've got acrobats. We've got uh, people selling camels. Also, plenty of unnecessary close-ups. I wait here, thank you. If you're still with me, Cotton. So close you can see the drawn on pencil moustache. Yes, he is a young one, a pup you might say. As luck would have it, her chic is just sitting across the way, and in true Hollywood fashion, they just get a white guy to dress up and do a silly accent. How do you do? Oh, well, thank you, and you? You are a vision. So Mac gifts him her virginity, which the chic naturally jumps at the chance to have. You will come with me to my palace and I will take your gift with great happiness. And whisks her away in an aeroplane. And the next day Mac recounts her adventure to Catalina. Turns out the Sheik was brought up by an English nanny. And he's only been to Morocco like three times, which explains the terrible accent. It's a bit humorous. Had an English nanny? <laughs> oh, the nanny was all right. I go to school at Oxford. I've been here three times my whole life. But in the very next scene, he resorts to that woeful accent. No man on this earth will ever again know the joy that you, you, will bring to me this night. Is it supposed to be seductive? Is Max so dumb and eager to go to Pound Town that she's just ignoring this guy putting on this weird accent? And now we experience some of the world's worst acting. So the Sheik has decided to incorporate honey into the mix. And while he's heading down south, as it were, Mac is flailing her arms unnaturally and fanning herself down. It's impressive to see worse acting than actual porno. Anyway, believe it or not, it gets much worse and less sexy. My stomach would sort of rise to meet his lips. No, stop. Anyway, it turns out the poor guy smoked too much and passed out before he could do the deed. We've all been there, right guys? Guys? So the girl decided to move on and also abide to the weird checklist that Mac has about losing her virginity. It has to be warm and sultry and dark-eyed when you give your virginity away. Oh, well, I'm sorry if behind the bike sheds of your secondary school isn't up to your standards, milady. Anyway, they narrow it down to Spain or Italy. Italians has scared me too much. And Ma, I, I can't give my virginity away in Spain. I am Spanish. Okay, so I'll give Catalina a slight pass. It's clear she's sort of focusing more getting the English out than actually acting. And doing something in a second language must be difficile. But Mac. 
I know you are a Spanish. I know you're a Spanish. Really? Catalina has excuse. What's yours? We're off to Spain. And how do you know we're in Spain? Bullfighting. Ole! And Mac is enamoured by our good looking horse riding banderiero. He invites them all to dinner where his mum has nailed a really good Spanish accent. You didn't have to invite them tonight. These are private moments for the family only. It's bad enough that that gypsy child is always with you. Did you and Mike enjoy the fight, Cotton? Might want to retake that. No, no, we're good. Okay. Did you and Mike enjoy the fight, Cotton? You're going to use that take for a feature film? Okay, let's just move on. Let's just move on. Anyway, this Spanish hunk has a young gypsy girl, Paloma, as his shadow. And Mac managed to bribe her with a little mirror to tell her where the Spanish heartthrob has gone. But oh no, he's canoodling with another woman. And it's revealed by Paloma that he's been with that woman since she was 14. And that he's going to be with Paloma after her 14th birthday. How long has he been with her? She seems 14 years birthday. He's me next. Soon, he's going to take me. Anyone else's red alerts going off? Looks like the horses aren't the only ones getting groomed. <laughs> but seriously, there's a tinge of nonsense about this entire film, you see. You see, not only was grooming implied, but with Paloma being 13, 14, later on there's like nude bath scenes with her. And even then the actress was only about 15, 16. It also gets worse when you realise that the writer of this film is John Derrick. At first I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. He's written a film for his wife to star in because there is no way in hell she would pass an audition. Then I found out how they met. So you see, John Derrick put a young Mary Collins into his film that was being shot in Greece. And during it, them two seemed to have an affair because John Derrick was already a married man. Oh, and by the way, she was 16 and he was 46. They literally had to live in Europe for two years because Bo Derrick was underage according to laws of California. Anyway, Mac is ever persistent flogging her virginity and she follows Angel up into the mountains where he's chasing after a lost bull and then follows him into an opium den, which Mac calls romantic. Do you know anything about opium? Next to nothing. Except that it sounds romantic. Yes, that's my first thought as well about a drug which has a war named after it. Romantic. Also for this next bit, I do love to think this is how the uh, conversation went down in the uh, executive studios. Right, we need to show that this establishment's run by the Chinese. Well, if the actress is Asian and the, she's got like, she's wearing like a blossom sort of Asian robe as well. No, we need something more obvious. Why don't we give her a giant dragon face tattoo? Do you know the poppy well? Well, we're acquainted. May I offer to guide you, if you would be so kind. Also, I love how it looks like the dragon tattoo was drawn on with crayon. So after finding Angel off his tits, he reveals he's got a shit ton of wine. And Catalina comes up with a clever little plan to get Mac in his good books by buying his business and letting her run it. You have too much money. Buy it. And I run it. You know, if I was a boy, I was supposed to run hours. Oh, please do it. I'm going to divide up the profits, okay? Okay. Some boring shots of them riding on a beach on horseback happens, and then Angel and Mac are warming by the fire. But oh no, they're interrupted by Angel's gypsy lover. Natty, Miss McGilvery is my guest. Mm, your guest. Good night, Natty. You bitch! All right, bitch! After kicking her out, Mac says she's aware of him knowing her since she was 14, with his claim being that the gypsy world is very different. You've known her, I believe, since her 14th birthday? The gypsy world is very different. And after that revelation, rather than, you know, be like, oh, piss off your nonce, she's interested and tells him of her failed hookup attempt with the sheik. And Hel, after finding out she's a virgin, is like, oh, please let me, please. And Hel arranges for them to uh, commit the deed at sunrise and now proceeds some of the most awkward start to Hanky Panky that's ever put on film. Mac decides to wear a bed sheet like a ghost. She doesn't want to get kissed yet and rather would kiss him. Then their first intimate moment together is this disgusting ear licking spit thing. Anyway, they bang. Uh, obviously due to the graphic nature of the scenes, I can't show you on YouTube. However, I can input a lovely visual metaphor. 
Now, normally this would be the climax of the film, pun intended, but no, we've still got like 40 minutes left. You see the entire point of this film, it's been this moment. It's been Max's goal the entire film to lose her virginity, but it falls flat. She's not a likable character in a sense. She always gets her own way. Her biggest hurdles have been the fact that a sheik fell asleep and a horse that Angel refused to sell her. In the end, he just gave it to her anyway. Also, these two have no chemistry whatsoever. Next day, Paloma and Mac are leaving the sauna when they're attacked by the crazy gypsy woman, which they swiftly lock her into a room and it's never later brought up or discussed. So my only assumption is that she just left, left to die in there. Everyone in the evening is celebrating the deal it's gone through of the selling of the wine. And look, oh, looks like Cotton's had too much to drink. What on earth was that? Look, we all know the classic comedy bit where you've had too much to drink and then you slowly fall back off your chair and fall on the floor. But why did they do it in slow-mo? It looks like a weird knockoff version of Inception. And that jarring cart, you don't see him hit the ground. You don't even see anyone's reaction to it. Just bizarre, like the editor was like, I've got more film to do. Just move on, just move on. And Hell is doing a spot of pissing off a bull for entertainment when, oh no. What was that? Clearly they had to like work around not showing the bull gorging this man in the leg. But the slow-mo doesn't make it more dramatic. I'll be honest, I kind of want to see the bull get some payback. Given how over the top that was, you think he'd been mutilated. Take Mary home. Do what? Do what? The dog, Mary, take her home. I'm all right. Nah, he's right. And once again, some wonderful acting from our lead actress here. You can almost see the moment where she remembers her lines. In a very emotional moment, the girls realise that Angel might never be able to have sex with Mac ever again. So she might only have had sex once in her entire life because she loves the dude. It's really sad, apparently. All they said was he most probably won't be able to. Probably. That means there's a chance. That's a pretty strong probably. I love the idea of the doctors walking in and delivering the news in a very professional manner, like he wouldn't be able to walk again, except it's about his penis. Does my dick work? No, your penis does not work. Kill me. So in a totally natural turn of events, Mac proposed to Angel, but Angel is like, nope, what's the point? I can't do anything with my mangled penis. And Mac has this crazy idea that if Angel teaches her how to ride horse like he does, then he would love her more, and that way he'll be able to shag again. Apparently the best way to get a penis working is to become a bullfighter. Who knew? Meanwhile, the Scottish dude returns, kilt and all, because remember, Scottish people wear kilts 24-7, with a wonderful, totally unnecessary crash zoom. Hello? Hello? So Kathleen and the Scots seem to be hitting it off, except a little hiccup with Kathleen's obsession of what's going on under his kilt. Wait, you won't tell me what do you have under that skirt, huh? What is under your skirt, huh? huh? Listen, if we're going to be friends, you'll no more be calling this kilt a skirt. Is that clear? Mmm, stop, Catalina. Flip the rolls and you'll see why that's uncomfortable. Hell, even Con is getting some at the moment. Mm. Now this film takes a turn for the stupider. Some goons have come to kidnap Mac. Now my favourite part of the entire movie occurs. Catalina completely stacks it and hits the pole. This was the take that made the film. It's great. You can tell it wasn't planned because of Paloma is laughing throughout the entire thing. The sleepy sheik has returned and is trying to steal Mac because he wants a virginity. But she says it's gone and he's like, oh well, I'll just kidnap you like my father did to my mother. Okay. Even in this ludicrous movie, Cotton can't stop a biplane from flying off and this leads to a, this great reaction from Bo Derek. Like when you're trying to make a kid feel better after a mistake. Aww. You're being abducted, by the way. Anyway, they have a talk about needs or some other rubbish 
and she just jumps out of the plane. Oh, oh. I say just... just gonna cut there after that bad delivery. No, move on. Okay. Because you're so rich. No, he has stolen me because I so cute. <laughs> yeah, that's always endearing, Mac. Taking the mick out of someone's broken English. This is the character we're supposed to be rooting for, by the way. Mac has a devious plan to get Angel up and moving after it's revealed that he can walk during the kidnapping scene. And it's to dump some birds in his room so he has to leave because he doesn't want to get shat on. What is going on in this movie? So after failing to get his uh, little soldier standing to attention after riding about on a horse naked, Mac decides it's time to try her newfound bull taunting knowledge in the ring. She does all of this to show off to Angel and to tell him that be ready for her at sunrise. You remember, like, from earlier? Oh, you do remember sunrise, don't you? After emasculating Angel about his horse riding abilities. Did I ride the horse marvellously today? Oh, even more marvellously than you? I did, didn't I? Always a good start to kick things off in the bedroom by making someone feel like shit. Angel gets a bit rough with the old ear thing and then Mac asks if he wants to taste her blood. What is going on? Do you want to taste my blood? She sprays him with her wet hair and then tells him how naughty he is for hooking up with a 14 year old. And then after which she confesses her love to him and suddenly he's erect. 14, shame on you. Was she as wild then? Did she scratch you? Long, wicked scratches? She did, didn't she? And you loved it. I think this seems like a perfect time to tell you that I love you. What? Haven't you guys just tried kissing or something? Anyway, we get to the climactic lovemaking scene, full of smoke machines, flashing lights, and a big neon sign saying ecstasy in the back. I can't show you this, obviously, because it's YouTube. But once again, visual metaphor. The scene goes on for far too long with people with no chemistry and we end with them getting married at the altar. So why is this film 0%? Because it's all bad. There is nothing redeemable about this weird nonce tinged romance film. I would actually recommend porn films over this. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you want. Make a comment about the least sexiest film you've ever seen. And adios. Mm -hmm.